Hey, French horn players. Uh, this is lesson one, which in your student instrumental course book is focused on reading music. Um, a lot of you might come to this with previous experience reading music, but up at the stop, top of this page, we're talking about kind of the fundamentals of what's on a music page. So the staff are the five lines and four spaces that are used to organize pitch. Uh, the clef sign, we will usually be using the treble clef, and that orients you to what the letter names are in the staff. Um, a bar line divides music by measure, and those measures um, can be different numbers of beats depending on the meter signature, which is down at the bottom of that section, the time signature. Um, the double bar signifies the end of a piece. So you always wanna look out for that because if you don't see one, music keeps going. And then we're talking about the duration value of a whole note. That's how long a note would last. This is the biggest duration that we usually use in music. Whole note would take up the whole measure. So that would be four counts in 4-4 four, four time. Um, a whole rest is the same amount of time, just in silence. So a rest is also measured in duration. And then of course, the time signature we're gonna be dealing with most often is four beats in the measure, and the beat is signified by the quarter note, which means there's four of them in a whole note. Get it? Quarter, whole. Okay, so we're gonna play through some of these. Um, the fingerings are written underneath the um, note. So the, our first note is C. We talked about that in getting started. On our single horn, it's gonna be no fingers down, okay? And we're basically going to do just some practice and rest repetition on this. What I'd like you to do is play right after me. Um, we're going to play a lot of these exercises four times. So when you hear my sound, then you can come back and try to copy it with your sound. And give yourself a lot of repetition to do this because you'll miss sometimes. Okay. French horn lesson one, number one, low C. One, two, three. <laughs> you can hear I missed a couple of times. Let's try that two more times. Okay, let's do number two, which is the same fingering, and E is no valves. Number two. <laughs> That one was more consistent for me. How was it for you? If you need to do it a couple more times, feel free to pause and try it again. Number three. This one is going to use C and E. So recognize the C is on that ledger line below the staff and the E is on the first line in the staff. We're just going to do this one time. Number three. One, two, ready. Now you may want to practice that one a few more times, so feel free to pause and do that on your own. Okay, number, number four, we're gonna play the G. Again, this is an open valve note, and we're gonna play this four times. One, two, three. I'm going 
going to try that two more times just to be more consistent. Two, three. I felt better about that after doing two really good ones in a row. Make sure that you pause and try it again until you feel like you're very consistent. Number five. This one is going to start on the G, then move to the E, and then the low C. So, me, then do. Notice that we have four beats of rest in between. Number five. One. Two, three. Practice that one enough times that you feel like you can be pretty consistent choosing from so, me, and do. Number six, this one is going to go up from the low C and then move to E and then move to G and then back down E and C. Number six. One, two, three. <laughs> Feel free to pause and try that one again until you feel like you're consistent. Number seven. Now we're going to start using our valves and everybody's excited about that. So our first valve, that's the one we play with our first finger, we're going to use that in the range of a low C to play a D. So just like we did with the open valve combinations, we're going to play four of those in a row. Play right after me and try to match my sound. Number seven, D. One, two, three. Again, feel free to do that again a few more times so you feel consistent with it. Number eight. Number eight is going to go C, rest four counts, D, rest four counts, and come back to the low C. Again, we're just practicing keeping our buzz relatively in the same spot, but adding the finger. Number eight. One, two, three. Feel free to pause and practice that one again if you need it. Number nine is another first valve note. And this is F. Notice it's on the first space of our staff. So we're going to play this again four times in a row just to practice our consistency. Number nine. One, two, three.
that's a good note to always be able to come back to because in a lot of our band music or band exercises, that's our home base or do note. It's not always going to be, but in band class, a lot of times that's our do. We call it concert B flat. On horn, it's called the F. Okay, number 10, we're going to start with G and then come down to F and then F and come down to E. Number 10. One, two, three. is where we put all five of these notes together. These five notes are, as we've written right underneath, G, F, E, D, and C. In our solfege, we'd call that So, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. So we are going to do this number 11, starting on the low C, move up our scale to the G, and then coming back down. Notice that there are no rests in between these notes. So well, I wouldn't expect that we can play all these without taking a breath in between. You might wanna to listen to how I handle the breath. And then if you need to take a breath more often than I do, just take it at the end of one of your whole notes. Okay, number 11, lesson one. One, two, three. Lesson one, feel free to go back, rewind, practice some of these things, and try to work on your consistency.